for as long as gaming has been a thing, WWE games have been around. But have you ever thought to yourself, hey, I want to play a WWE game, but I don't actually want to wrestle? Of course you haven't, but here are some games where that's the case anyway. Now it really all depends on what you consider a wrestling game. Do you just need wrestling moves? Do you need a wrestling ring? If I put Zangief in a wrestling ring, is that a wrestling game? It's all arbitrary. WWE Crush Hour is a vehicular combat game. Yes, that's right. In the reality that this game takes place in must be hell because Vince McMahon somehow has control over all TV shows and commercials. Damn. So with all that power, he makes a show where all the wrestlers have muscle cars and literally kill each other. Well, I guess that's a better concept than a cartoon about his ass. Yes, that's real. So pretty much this is the off-brand version of Twisted Metal that your grandma buys you because she doesn't know any better. I just can't get over this concept. Imagine an NBA game that was a first-person shooter or something. I guess Gilbert Arenas would star in that one. Just saying. The game has pretty good presentation. There are a lot of characters to pick from. The Rock, Stone Cold, Triple H, uh, this guy I've never heard of. I like that The Undertaker has mounted guns on his car in the shape of coffins. Also, Rikishi has his ass on the back of the vehicle. I'm a little disappointed Kurt Angle doesn't have a milk truck. I felt that was a missed opportunity. It should be like Sweet Tooth's ice cream truck. But instead of Sweet Tooth and ice cream, it's Kurt Angle and milk. And perks. Yeah! I'll pick Kane. Oh, here comes the fire. Oh, all of the vehicles make entrances like the wrestlers do, which is pretty cool. Entering in the steamroller, Rukishi! The graphics and environments look nice, but they're too big and makes the cars seem tiny. It looks less like the wrestlers are driving big monstrous death machines and more like they're controlling remote control Tonka toys that has a little figure of themselves in the driver's seat. The gameplay is pretty standard. You have unlimited ammo for your regular fire, and you have collectible items around the map. You can collect boosts too, which deal huge damage when you ram into somebody. But they also give a good sense of speed too. I'm actually shocked at how well this game controls, especially the drifting. The game has JR on commentary and it's bad. Do you guys remember the SmackDown Just Bring It commentary? Michael Cole and Taz would call the action, but the commentary was just made up of a bunch of phrases that were awkwardly spliced together. The Rock and Triple H will be having a match. This singles match is great. Imagine that, but with way less lines to choose from. Spectacular maneuver there! Arcane! What a maneuver executed there! Arcane! A high speed ram there! Arcane! It's always something about twisty rockets or ramming into someone. Why even have it in the game if it's just going to be the same thing over and over again? Overall, it's a fun game, especially for playing with someone, but it gets old pretty fast. There's a lot of unlockables in here, so if you're super bored and want to try this, it's not horrible. But most of the novelty comes from the concept itself. Oh, son of a bitch! WWE Immortals is a fighting game that was developed by NetherRealm, who are the developers behind Mortal Kombat and Injustice. The game gives wrestlers superpowers based off their personas. I don't know about you, but that sounds amazing. I always thought a WWE fighter would work really well. What could even go wrong with this? Oh, it's a mobile game. I don't know about you, but that shit ain't boring. Hi. Well, there goes all my hype for this game. The story is that Bray Wyatt has a special lamp or something and Triple H and Stephanie take it for some reason and the lamp releases alternate reality versions of the wrestlers. Like Randy Orton, that's a snake. Trish Stratus, that's a witch. Big E, that's a strong man. Daniel Bryan, uh, dressing up as a Daniel Bryan fan. What? Triple H, the game, the king of kings. He's in a suit. Come on, I can see that on TV, man. The gameplay, as you'd expect, is really, really bad. You know how before every Mortal Kombat fight you have that announcer? Round one, fight. Hell yeah. In this, you have Michael Cole being, uh, himself. Watch out. This one's gonna be brutal! Yeah, that'll get the blood pumping. 
Since it's on mobile, you can't actually move your fighter yourself. The game does it for you. You tap on your phone three times for a basic combo, and you swipe three times for a heavy combo, and that's it. You can't even combine light and heavy attacks together in a combo. I don't think we'll be seeing this one at EVO anytime soon. I'm just saying. There are three super moves each fighter has, and they all look and sound pretty brutal. That's all the game has going for it, though. Just look up a YouTube video of all the moves. That's all you need to do. So I fought for a little bit, and by fought I mean I fought the opponent in the game and the urge to fall asleep because this game is super boring, and then I run into a roadblock, and I ain't talking about the pay-per-view. I ran out of stamina and I need to wait to recharge? Yes, that's right, this game has stereotypical mobile game bullshit, like waiting to play the game and in-game money to buy packs for better fighters. Trash. Well guess what, I would never spend money on this, but even if I wanted to I can't because the game is not even supported anymore. A game called Immortal ended up dying. How ironic. This is such a good concept that's just wasted, man. Years ago, there was actually a similar WWE game being developed. It was called WWE Brawl. It took the wrestlers and made them super stylized based off their personas. Although instead of a traditional fighter, this game seemed to resemble Power Stone more. The game was cancelled and never saw the light of day. If you want a wrestling fighting game, just download Mugen or however it's pronounced. Immortals was dead as soon as they decided to make it a mobile game. Playing a fighting game on mobile is like trying to play Call of Duty with a Guitar Hero guitar. Don't even bother. WWF Betrayal is on the Game Boy and despite how it looks, it's not a wrestling game. You pick your guy, you hear a nice 8-bit rendition of their theme, Then the story starts. So The Rock is about to win the title, but then Stone Cold hits him with his signature weapon. A trash can. <laughs> After that, Vince talks to Rock and tells him Stephanie's been kidnapped. And if he gets her back, The Rock gets a shot at the title. So we go on to beat the shit out of everyone who stands in our way. Refs, security guards, Luigi with no mustache, Solid Snake, guys with machine gun suitcases, and hookers. With this many security guards, I find it hard to believe you could steal Tic Tacs undetected, let alone a whole ass person. Honestly, this story reminds me of WrestleMania 19 on a GameCube. Your wrestler gets fired and then you go around beating the shit out of and murdering innocent construction workers that are just trying to do their jobs. I'm not exaggerating with the murdering part either. Anyway, you have a punch and a kick. If you land enough in succession, you get to do a finisher. In this case, a rock bottom. I recommend doing the running drop kick all the time because it does the most damage. You have weapons like pipes, wrenches, and nightsticks. No chair is funny enough. I like how he swings the weapon. <laughs> I also like the rock's walking animation. What's up with all this sass? His arms swing with more power when he's walking than his punches do. We make our way through the parking lot and we see Austin stuffing Stephanie into the car. We face Austin in an encounter that's better than all three of their WrestleMania matches combined. Next we're on a train and these suitcase machine gun guys can burn in the deepest pits of hell. So we get out of the train and we run into Big Daddy Cool Diesel. <laughs> Just kidding, it's the Undertaker. We beat him and he tells us Steph is at Titan Towers. We go there, we beat up everyone, and then Austin surprises us with multiple RKOs. Slithering. Oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! We take care of him and reach the final room. And Vince was behind the whole thing. It's me! The Rock. Oh, son of a bitch! What? It's me! The Rock. It was a setup to kill The Rock, I guess. He sicks The Undertaker on us and we beat him with this weird slam thing. What the fuck is that? We get to the roof and Triple H puts his title on the line and we fight. What an insane! Now they're swinging away! They're talking about the swinging for the finish! Wow! Rock'em, sock'em robots here! I do this weird slam thing again and that's it. I beat the game in half an hour. You can play as the other three wrestlers, but everyone plays the exact same minus the finishing move. Even the story seems to be the same with just the wrestlers swapped around. 
Maybe there's a Sonic Adventure-esque secret final story if you beat the game with all four wrestlers. But eh, I'm good. So yeah, those are the oddest of odd non-wrestling WWE games. There are some others, but they're mostly mobile games. I don't really give two shits about Supercard or this puzzle one. There's also the WrestleMania arcade game and In Your House, but you're doing wrestling moves in a wrestling ring, right? Nah, screw it. 